Good morning. Hope you're having a good day. 2023, we have arrived. Full week into the whole month of January. It's hard to believe, isn't it? 2023. Uh, yesterday I was getting ready, uh, writing some stuff up for vacation Bible school, and excited about that. Uh, it's called Rocket. I'm looking at the idea of you know, taking the gifts and talents that we have in this life and using them. Uh, there's lots of different things that will be going on, but it's a space theme kind of thing, a NASA type thing. And I was reading the news the other day, and and looks like uh, everybody's getting set. NASA and uh, SpaceX and everything are looking at uh, landing on the moon within the next year, which is pretty amazing. Uh, anyways, with the new year, you may have had some resolutions and a lot of people do that, and uh, so you may have some particular ones you're working on, maybe with related to health or devotion time or just a, a myriad of different things that might be on your resolution list. I was thinking to yesterday, though, about the idea of resolution and resolve and uh, the idea that we are resolved to do certain things and to serve. God in, in a certain way, and, and um, you know, really every day for us in the Christian walk is kind of a resolution day, isn't it? I mean, as we continue to press forward in the renewing of our mind and uh, in service to God and doing His work. But uh, today we're going to be talking about opposites, and I'm just going to hit on a little bit of a topic that I had the opportunity to address with uh, children in kids' church the other day, but I think it's a practical thing for us to look at as we go into this new year. So as we start off, let's go ahead and uh, start our time in prayer and uh, get on with it this morning, okay? <laughs> so I'm glad you're here and uh, look forward to talking a little bit about um, this topic of opposites. Dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you. Uh, here we are at the cusp at the beginning of a new year. Uh, in our mind's eye and hindsight, looking back over the last year, it's amazing all the things that have occurred on a global level, uh, knowing uh, each one of us in our own lives have faced challenges and, and there's been periods of joy and periods of struggle, I'm sure, for everyone. And so it's just amazing to see uh, how you walk with us through life and you help us uh, in our walk. And so today, God, I just pray as we read from your word and as we take this moment uh, to focus on this topic, I just pray that you would uh, allow your word to speak in new ways to us that would encourage us in our walk and our service to you. And it's your name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> All righty, so... The other night, we talked about the topic of opposites a little bit, and so we, we had the opportunity to play a couple games that I thought were fun. We had a nice little group, and uh, the first game we played, boy versus girl, you know, boys versus girls, and that was always exciting to see because, you know, uh, both are equally competitive and utilize much different uh, strategies. And so our first game was a simple game of matching, and, but we did it a little bit differently with the topic of opposites. We, we had them match opposites. So we had a, a number of cards that were turned over face down. And uh, so they'd turn a card over. One would show a picture of something cold. So they'd have to find the opposite, which was hot. And uh, they had a couple little X cards out there. If you picked it, you would lose all your matches. And so it was fun. So they worked hard at it. And, and uh, the girls won, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> But it was stiff competition, and <laughs> stress levels were high, right? Uh, and so then we played another game. And this one was kind of an opposite game as well, but we broke them up into two teams. And uh, it wasn't just boy and girl, it was everybody against everybody based on number ones and number twos. And we separated them by those two numbers. And the cup game that we played was that we had dispersed cups on the floor, and the job was within a minute, the teams had each have to go and turn over a cup, either 
turn the cup face up or the other team would have to turn the cups face down. So their object was it's trying each team was going to try to either one have all the cups facing up or all the cups facing down. And so we did that several rounds and uh, there was a lot of different strategies the kids were learning to do. Uh, some would turn all the cups over, some would move the cups into an area and then they'd wait to the last little countdown and turn them over really quick. It was it was very interesting. But at the end of the day, even with the teams, um, they did work pretty good together. But as far as the teams that were against each other, it was a very difficult job because as soon as you turn one over, uh, then obviously somebody else is coming around the corner, so to speak, and turning it back the other way. Um, and so it just was a repetitive, continual thing. And so we, we took time after our games to kind of process some things. And we had a little bit of scripture here that I'm going to read here in a second. But uh, one of the questions that we're addressing was um, the idea of opposites. Now, in this lifetime uh, that we are given the privilege to have, uh, each day, of, as we know, is a, a gift. Each breath that we take is a gift that God has given us. But each day, we are faced with different challenges as Christians, and we may feel in our walk and in our efforts that we are living uh, really opposite of the world, which <laughs> with the way most of the world is, that's, that's a good thing on one level. But we find that it is difficult and it's challenging to live a life of opposites uh, because we may feel just like that last game I mentioned with the cup game, we may feel like we're everything's working against us. Everything is doing just the opposite of what we're trying to do. Now, a couple things that we are focusing on with Kids Church, which is applicable, obviously, to our walk as adults, is the idea of our individuality and the gifts and talents God has given us and the use of them within the model and framework of the church, the body of the church, and the importance of working together. Because it is, is my belief, as, as shared by obviously many of you, that the church with Jesus as God as the head is a mighty force. Now, the world, as I've mentioned, is living kind of counter to those things of tenets of faith that we follow and adhere to in our walk. But it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the great opportunity that that opposite or the opposing um, view that we have to offer through God working through us to others. Now, you've heard the term before, opposites attract. Well, I think about that. I think about me and my wife. Um, we're opposite in many ways, but there's many things that we're similar on. But uh, in a world that is living, uh, going, I'll say within our country, going a certain direction, um, the opportunity for our lives that are being lived for God has an opportunity to really shine and to really, really like a billboard at every corner, stand out. Now, I asked um, some of the things that... Uh, the, the things that we took to kids, I asked them a simple question just about the idea. Or what are those things that are contrary or are, are, that go against our actions that are not things that we're supposed to do as Christians? And they simply mentioned, you know, the things from the Ten Commandments, those things that have been hardwired into our conscience uh, uh, for all humanity, really. Uh, but like the things of lying and cheating, stealing, stealing or killing. All these things they were answering right off, and um, and so we talked about some of those things. So today, what I'm thinking about, I want you to be encouraged. If you're living your life and you're feeling like you're living a life where everything is opposite or running contrary to your beliefs, and 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 you feel like you're hitting a wall, well, on one level, congratulations because. If you're living for God, that is what you're going to face. You're going to face a world that is running contrary. But stepping back from that, I want you to think about, you know, you know even as Paul had talked about in the, the word, 
um, that there is a war that goes on with us, each of us, that uh, is opposing one another. There is the spiritual part of us, our soul, and then there is our flesh. And I will be open to you all, as I always try to be, as I'm accountable to you, that my mindset and the things I do, God gets to reveal to me every single day uh, <laughs> what uh, a person I am in, in need of a Savior. You know, uh, the ideas, um, the things we war with, the things that we seek after, uh, not necessarily carnal things, but the things that uh, it could be, but the variety of things in which our flesh desires the things of the world and is at war with the things with our soul. And so as we know in our Christian walk, as we are led by the Spirit and led by His Word and teaching in our church community, we are sharpened uh, and we are made more able to, to allow the, 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 the soul, the, the, the spiritual side of us to become stronger and to win over the things that we wrestle with in our flesh. I take a moment to say that a little sidestep just to state that when we are living in a world of opposites, we have to understand that same war that is on the outside is one that really, if we look at it and give it some thought, is a battle that we fight within us. And so, how do we handle this war and how we do these things? You know, I, I won't touch these things today per se, but I just want to be an encouragement that if you're living in a world of opposites, then and you're feeling like things are going opposite a lot of times, then, again, congratulations, you're on the right track, you know? Um, so the world, though, um, just because it's opposite doesn't mean it's not attractive to the world. You know, we, when, when the world seeks after these things, we know that everything really is a poor substitute for God. As I've mentioned in other devotion times, that the enemy, Satan, wants to create counterfeit opportunities for every situation. He wants to provide uh, counterfeits to things that we think will, will provide that which we want and that, are, that we need. And it is deceptive, at the very least, among other things. Now, we know the world, uh, the enemy wants to offer what appears to be love in the world. There's... Uh, there's so many contexts in which all these things could take fruition. But, again, people will pursue things, the love for money, the love for different things, to fill that void that only God can fill. And so, with the idea of opposites, the attractiveness, is that if we are living our life, a godly life, not a perfect life, I mean a godly life, one that is actually focused on God and is seeking to... Uh, one, become more uh, like him and to, to, to win over our own war with our flesh, when we are allowed to be a conduit of God's love, that becomes quite attractive to a world that is holding on to and clinging on to substitutes to fill that void. So the things that uh, I was mentioning to kids the other night, honesty and integrity, I wrote down some things, I'll make sure I cover uh, you know, honesty and integrity, those kind of simple things that we strive for and can only be through Christ uh, is highly attractive to a world that there's that is struggling at best. You know, nothing people I, I and opportunities that I've had in this position as well as uh, prior to coming to grace, it has always been my experience that uh, the world uh, and what it has to offer is, is never, never settling. It, there is never a period in which you feel totally content. There's always a void. And I know what the void is, obviously we do, and that is God. So, alrighty, so I, I, gotta, I was going to talk about scripture for a second. I'm going to hit on that, and then we'll wrap this up. Um. We talked about on um, Wednesday night, I'm going to read from John uh, chapter 13, talking about what Jesus did in the washing of his disciples' feet. 
Now this was an opposite thing from what some would think that Jesus should or would do. You know, they'd spent three years with Jesus and they had observed so many things about him. And, 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 and as the Son of God, he demonstrated his authority and power over nature, his power over all things, the things that God had given him. And he also demonstrated God's love and, and, and his teaching help and, and help them understand. But yet here again, before the, the, the night, very night that he would be uh, taken away to be, to be crucified the next day, we find him doing yet another thing that's eye-opening and opposite to what they would see Jesus, the Son of God, doing. And that is simply, again, washing the feet of the disciples. But I'm going to read here just a little bit of the scripture, and then I'm going to allow, you know, I would encourage you to read the rest. I'm just going to hit on this specific topic, though. So it states here in John 13, 1, It was just before the Passover feast, and Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. It was time for him to go to the Father. Jesus loved his disciples who were in the world, so he now showed them how much he really loved them. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already tempted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. He had told Judas to hand Jesus over to his enemies. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything under his power. He also knew he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal and took off his outer clothes. He wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that he poured water into a large bowl. Then he began to wash his disciples' feet. He dried them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now we know in, in the story as it continues, Peter had some obje objection because, again, washing of feet was a, a job that was menial and, and, and considered should be done by a servant. And so Jesus was demonstrating yet again that he had came to serve. He came to serve God and to serve man to, to make a way where there was no way. And there's so much more about this. But what I, what I wanted to hit on here, this part, just in the beginning part, that the Lord knew the Father, knew that the Father had everything under his power. He also knew he had come from God and was returning to God. So he, he was living a life exactly within the will of the Father. With all the authority, as Jesus took on yet another aspect of his godliness that he took on humanity, he was all about doing God's will. And so today, uh, I would like, I, I encourage you to read the rest of that. I, I, but the idea again being, as we live in this life, we're going to be facing things that are opposing to our Christian walk. But we need to uh, take courage and know uh, that uh, the things that are opposite to our, our contrary, that, that's a sign of our, our um, I would say, um, progress <laughs> in our walk. And to take on this, this here that I just barely hit on today, I'm going so long, I'm sorry I'm wrapping up so quick, but we take on this servant-mindedness about doing God's will so that we might look at others that are living an opposite life to us, that we would look at them in a way that Christ even looked and demonstrated his love and his servant-mindedness to his disciples. So today, be encouraged in your walk. Continue to fight the good fight. Continue to, to be resolved in your efforts to allow your, your spiritual uh, man or woman in your life, in, in, in your, in, in, in you, be successful in winning over and and uh, the over the flesh and the war that is within us, and let us also be mindful and to serve in a way that will draw people closer to God by the by allowing God to win over our lives completely and to do, be shown through our lives. So. Let us go ahead and uh, pray. I hope you have a great day today and uh, hope things go your way. And so let's go ahead and end this time together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for who you are. We thank you for the tools you've given us to 
to develop ourselves, to, to grow in our understanding of you, um, to deepen our walk and our relationship with you. And God, I just pray that you would help us, even in this new year, that we would have a resolve each day to pursue you, that you would, you would be able to help us, as I mentioned already, help us win the battle that wars within us, that you would be the victor in our lives, and also that we would have that type of compassion and love as you demonstrated to your disciples, that we just barely hit on today in, the, in, in Scripture, that we'd have that same type of love for one another as a body and serving you and your church, and that we'd also have that same type of love and commitment to the lost, that we might be able to demonstrate and, and demonstrate your light and love through our words and actions, our deeds, and that the opposite opposing life that we live counter to the world's would be attractive, that would draw people in. So they might know your truth and then and they in turn would be able to have the hope of, of eternity that you've given us. That they they would be able to release the really the chains of this world, that they would find your forgiveness for which you paid the price and an atonement for our sins, that they would find that. And they would be given a hope that is sustaining in this lifetime that brings joy among any circumstance and that they would find a purpose throughout this life. So we thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness to us time and time again. And thank you for your mercy and your grace. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, and uh, God bless you guys. And remember to go bless. See you soon. Bye.